Hey, how can I help you? I have a letter written by Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1922. Cool, let me see it. Isn't it amazing how uh, presidents usually write like doctors? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we got the letter from my wife's grandfather. He was a prominent attorney in New York State, and I suspect the letter was in his law firm. And I think the letter is valued at about $15,000. I'd like to sell this letter because my oldest son is getting ready to go to college, and it would be a great opportunity to offset some of the costs. Do you mind if I read it? Please. It sucks getting old. Tell me about it. Dear Al, would you have a talk with my old friend, Robert Pratter? He has an insurance matter which has already been well taken care of by Mr. Butler. Scribble, scribble, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Yeah, so basically it's a letter he's writing to some guy named Al, hoping he takes care of some insurance matters. Yes. OK. It's written on 22. He did get polio on 21. He's paralyzed from the waist down at this point. And it is on his personal letterhead. Right. Yeah, another great thing is his full signature. Right. OK, um, you don't always get his full signature. You get initials with Roosevelt. FDR memorabilia is incredibly popular because he's linked to so many historical moments that shaped our country. It's definitely interesting, but I just need more information. So um, how much you want to get out of it? 15,000. 15,000. I've seen other letters on the same letterhead and stationery go for substantially more money. So I feel it's a fair price for it. OK. It is really cool, but I have my doubts. My big concern over this is this is right after he was struck down by polio, became paralyzed. I would really assume he had a secretary doing everything for him. I suspect not, only because it's on his own letterhead. And the, the penmanship matches across the whole letter and then into the signature. Uh, do you mind if I have someone look at it? I have a friend. She deals in documents like this. OK, great. I'm going to go give her a jingle. Great, thank you. I'm confident that the letter was written by FDR himself. We've seen similar letters online that show exactly the same penmanship. July 1922, at this point, he has retired from being Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Right. He just had a failed run for vice president. Right. He, with James Cox, ran against Warren G. Harding in 1920 and lost. Right. And then it was just the summer before that he contracted polio. And actually, they believe it was during the Boy Scout Jamboree that he participated in. So. Well, it, it seems plausible. I mean, a lot of kids there, and uh, there was no vaccine. Yeah. So what are your concerns? I know that most of his life, he had secretaries. And I just assume that, especially this time, when he's not feeling well, they were all dictated letters. Right. Well, at this time, I mean, he certainly did have secretaries. And he had many secretaries throughout his life who would sign his name. All right, so whip out the apparatus. <laughs> the apparati? The optic. OK. <laughs> Here, what I have is essentially a dossier of different secretaries who signed FDR's name over the years. You can see how many different secretaries there were. See all these? These are proxy signatures from the 1930s. And what we really need to compare it to is the signatures of Roosevelt's own handwriting from about 1921 to 1923. The D in Franklin D. Roosevelt tends to be pretty different. You can see here it almost looks like an N or even a W. And I'll, I'll highlight this here so you can see that a little bit more. And then the other thing is specifically the angle of you seeing that crossbar and the F. That's an angle that's often changed by secretaries. You can see these angles here are the same. So you think it's legit? Yes. OK, sweet. Now, what do you think it's worth? Collectors love the presidents. If you follow the presidents, you're following American history step by step. If it were done while he was president, there are only a couple dozen surviving letters while he was president on his letterhead, completely in his handwriting. I would actually say that this is probably worth about 1500 That's a little disappointing. You know, I had hoped to get something closer to about 15,000. 15,000 would be completely viable, but it's really not too special. He's not talking about his failed vice presidential bid, for example, or he's not talking about running for governor himself, which he does a little bit later. He had much more time in 1922 to do a handwritten letter than he would have, say, when he was president in 1941. 
that's when you get into those amazing values like 15,000. But yeah. as it is, the content is pretty so-so. Right. OK. Thanks. You're the best. I was sorry to disappoint him, but with the content in the year, it just wasn't going to go that high. It's a some insurance matter. It's Mr. A, go talk to Mr. B, and that's all we've got. How much do you want now? Um, well, she said it's only worth 1500 So it's really worth more to me than even the $1,500. So I, I don't know if I would want to sell it now. OK. You know, because you're not going to offer me 15000 No, I'm going to offer you like 800 bucks. Right. So for $800, I'd rather just keep it in our family. All right, sorry for the bad news. Thanks for your time. Uh, no problem. It's still a great letter. It was written by a great president. And it's something that we can pass down from generation to generation.